Okay, referring to that last problem from the last video, uh, where we were talking about the average cost right here, if you see something that says, what is the limit as n, and n is the independent variable, the one's treated like x, what is the limit as n approaches infinity, then it's a question about the horizontal asymptote. It's saying, what is the, what's going on as the x values, which in this case is n, are getting larger and larger and larger. There's only three choices. They, it either levels off to a horizontal asymptote, or it's heading off and getting bigger and bigger, heading off to positive infinity, or it's getting lower and lower to negative infinity. So that's what that means. And actually, uh, we'll be able to you know, get the answer to what the location of the horizontal asymptote is uh, very easily here in a little bit. You actually get it by looking at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. The degree is the highest power on it. The degree of the numerator is first power. Degree of the denominator is first power. And you'll see a very important page of notes in your book. Let me see if I can find it here. Right here. It's early in section uh, chapter 2, section 4, three important concepts. And roots are another name for x-intercepts. You find them by setting the numerator equal 0. And down here, vertical asymptotes set the denominator equal 0. But horizontal asymptotes in this area right here, and algebraically is a good way to find it, and it tells you what to do, and uh, these are the three situations. Well, we're in the case where the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, and if that's the case, you look at the leading coefficients, and that's where the horizontal asymptote is located. So on that problem that we're on, let me um, go to that a second. Um, that's right here. I think it is. Yeah, on this one, see, degree on top is first power. Degree on the bottom, first power. When that's the case, and you're looking for a horizontal asymptote, then you look at the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient here is 1.5. Leading coefficient here is 1. 1.5 over 1 is 1.5. That's what it's approaching as as you put in larger and larger numbers. That's what it, it, it will have a horizontal asymptote. The function is getting closer and closer to that height of 1.501. Okay. And... Um, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and graph this one on Excel right here in case we didn't do it on the last video. So putting in my coefficients for, the la for that problem, right here the linear coefficient was 1.5 in the numerator and in the denominator, uh, sorry, and there was a constant of 100 and the denominator of the linear coefficient is 1. So let me put those in here, a 100 right here and a 1 for the linear coefficient, nothing here and nothing there. So there's your coefficients in. Make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. Now, if you're looking at what's going on in the long run after, you know, many, many items have been produced, right? See, it's two hundred thousand dollar fifty. If I put in larger and larger numbers in here, you get closer and closer to a dollar fifty. And you can see it on the graph. Here, it's extremely high because there's a uh, vertical asymptote on this function at uh, 0. That's come from setting the denominator equal 0. But if you look at that graph, let's go, well, you can see already it's flatlining. It looks like it's flatlining at 0. So get away from vertical asymptotes. Again, you can find vertical asymptotes. Let me just show you. Again, vertical asymptotes, you can find them by setting the denominator equal 0. If you set the denominator equal 0, you get n equals 0. So in other words, at x equals 0, see that's playing the role of x, at x equals 0, there's a vertical asymptote. So it's, um, if you want to see what it's flatlining, don't go, don't be near a vertical asymptote to hardly find anything on your graph. Just stay away from them. So let's stay away from 0 here. Let's look at the graph from 10 out to 100. Well, if you do that, you can see the graph's coming down. And you might say, well, how low does it go? That's how low it goes, $1.50 right here. Let's go out farther. Let's take a look at it from, let's say, 100 out to 1,000. Looks like it's going to come down to, what, $1.50. If you go out farther, let's go out to a million. I think that shows it pretty good. It's leveling off to $1.50. No matter how many you produce, the average cost is getting closer and closer to $1.50. So uh, anyway, that's the idea on that. And let's go on to the next problem. So the next problem here, and we can see it here, plugging those in, we're getting closer and closer to $1.50. Reason is, is this this initial cost of 100, that's a big effect if you're only doing a few of these. But if you do a million of these, this $100 doesn't mean much at all. So anyway. Okay, let's go down here, this function. 
concentration medication. So 3t minus 1, let's put our coefficients in here a second. 3t minus 1 here, so 3 and a minus 1. And on the denominator, there was a 3t squared, so that's right here, 3. And so you can see the layout for it. And the denominator, the b, is the squared term, squared coefficient. So that's uh, 3. And what else did we have? No, it isn't. It's a 2. My fault. 2 and a 1 on the bottom. 2 and a 1. Right here, 2. No linear. There's no t to the first power, but a 1 right there. OK, now, if we're looking for a max or min on this thing, OK, we have no idea where the max or min is going to be. And eventually, this problem says find the max or min. So let's look at this part. So I have no idea where it is. I just look in a general area, let's say 0 to 10. It, and I'm looking for now this particular problem says what is the maximum, I believe, on this maximum concentration. So we're looking for the high spot. So look, if I don't see a peak in the area that I'm looking in, then go farther. Go out to 20. I mean, it's in minutes, so it probably only makes sense to look in the positive area. And stay away from vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes on this. Look, set the denominator equal 0. You're not going to get anything real from this thing because 2t squared plus 1 has no real solutions. You know, if you set, how do you, you find vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal 0. If you solve that quadratic, 2t squared plus 1 equals 0, you'll get imaginary solutions. Go to the quadratic sheet, and I'll show you. 2t squared, no linear term, minus 1. What's the x-intercepts? Sorry, let's make sure we got it. It was plus 1. Plus 1 is what it was. What's the x-intercepts? No x-intercepts. So there's uh, imaginary. Look, the only imaginary solutions to that. So there's no vertical asymptotes. So nothing to worry about. Nothing that you got to stay away from when looking at the graph. So looking back at this graph, it's easy to find the max on this because I can see it's somewhere between what two x values? 0 and 2. So 2. Now I can see the highest spot is somewhere around 1. Okay, It's definitely between. Um, 0.5 and 1.5. If you need to, takes you a little bit longer, that's okay. Well, 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.5 to 1.5. Okay, where's the maximum? Somewhere about here. It's really, really close to 1. So I tell you what, let's go from 0 0.8 out to 1.2. 0 0.8 to 1.2. Where's the maximum? Here it is, somewhere between the high spot, somewhere between 1 and 1.2. Okay, 1 to 1.2. What's the high spot? Somewhere between 1.1 and 1.15. 1 1.1 and 1.15. What's the maximum? I guarantee you it's somewhere between 1.11 and 1.12. And you can be off by 100, so either way is fine. But if you really want to narrow it in, you could. 1.11 to 1.12. There you go. It's 1.11, probably 5. And what is the maximum concentration? 0. 0.6726. Good. So that's how you can do your max and min stuff. You have to do those on Excel. Um, let's see what else we got here. So the other things on this were uh, uh, when does it, the uh, medication enter the bloodstream? Well, that's when it goes positive. And so let's look on the graph, see when it goes positive. This is concentration. Let's look at the graph from zero out to here. Where does it go positive? Right here. This is when it starts to enter the bloodstream. That's called an x-intercept. How do you find an x-intercept? Well, you can look at it here. It's somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4, and you could narrow in on it if you wanted to. But it's pretty easy to do it uh, algebraically. To find an x-intercept, you just set the numerator equal 0. Set the 3t minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, divide by 3, you get 1 third. That's where it is. You can see it on the graph. If I look at this graph, let's go from 0.3 to 0.4. You can see it hits the x-axis right here, 0 0.3333, which is one third. All right. So uh, let's see what else we got here. What's the limit as t approaches infinity? Well, when you say things like that, <laughs> that's meaning what's going on in the long run as t gets larger and larger. When you're looking for the limit as t approaches infinity, that's a horizontal asymptote question. You can put in either if you're using Excel, you can put in a really big number and see what it levels off to. That's very close to zero. Look at the graph out a long ways. Let's look it out way far. What does it look like? Flatlining. See? How high is that flat line? Zero. That's what it's getting close to. It's getting close to zero. So you can see it on a graph, but not all of these can you do. You know, they might be too messy to use Excel on. So how can you uh, find it then if you're not using Excel? Well, that's where you play the degree game, like we were talking about earlier on this problem. Power of the top was 1. Power of the bottom is 1. When the powers are the same, 
Look at the leading coefficient. Well, these powers are not the same. The power on the top here, on this function, right here, is 1. It's a first degree equation on the top. It's a second degree equation on the bottom. Now you can refer to your notes, but eventually you have to memorize this, so I'll show you here on the notes what I'm talking about. Right here, horizontal asymptote. We, the degree of the denominator is bigger. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then the function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that's the situation with that function. It's going to flatline at y equals 0. Yep. So what is it? Well, it's getting closer to 0. It's flatlining at 0. So in the long run, the concentration is approaching 0, and that kind of makes sense. After a long period of time, a medication is going to be leaving your body, so it's a concentration will be approaching zero. And then right here is a picture of the graphs where I was narrowing, narrowing in on the um, maximum. So uh, I'll stop there, and uh, I'll do it for that section. Well, I shouldn't say for that section, for that example, and we'll have other examples for these here.